going on, everybody? Happy Saturday morning or almost afternoon. Hey, ready to get fired up today. Um, we get to start Big Ten play today, and I'm a little uh, little apprehensive so far. Um, I think Fred Hoiberg has done a pretty good job at Nebraska. However, it's been kind of a revolving door of players. So each year has been with the transfer portal has been the ability to get in new guys. Um, but this year he's got a couple, he's got a couple young guys on this team. Uh, let's, we'll start with Bryce McGowan's um, six, seven. This kid can absolutely kill it. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely gives me something to worry about as far as matchup defensively. You know, we're coming into Big Ten play, and already we're talking about defense, bench scoring, and cutting back turnovers are the keys to most of these teams' games. Oh, excuse me? What did I do with that thing? Oh, it's in my pocket. Yeah, because uh, this kid here, uh, he's 6'7". He uh, put up 24 points against North Carolina State, and uh, he's had at least 20 point four 20-point games as a freshman thus far. And I really feel like uh, – dang it, i got to turn my, this thing off. And I really feel like this Big Ten slate, we need to knock him down pretty quick. Honestly, we cannot let we cannot afford to let him get going or get hot. Um, I looked over some of their roster a little bit this morning. I don't really see very many people. I think the Derek Walker was there last year and Lat Man. I think he was there since, you know, from the starting lineup. Uh, excuse me, of the projected starters. But I don't really see anybody, you know, I just see that this kid Alonzo Verge, uh, he almost had a triple double in that game against North Carolina State. And ACC in basketball is not like ACC in football. You know, that that's stiff competition. Everywhere we go is a tough place to play. Uh, Huskers were just got off a plane not that long ago from playing North Carolina State, and I believe that was the four overtime game. Uh, that kid Alonzo Verge, he was one rebound short from a triple double. So their guard position is putting out what they need to put out. We've been uh, Parker Stewart's been shooting better. Uh, he's he's shooting well. Uh, Miller Cop's been playing better, and we've been taking baby steps forward. You know. <coughs> Coming into today, I think our main point of adversity is the one thing that has to get better and for us to win basketball games is we cannot turn the ball over that much. We should have handily won that game at Syracuse if we just control the ball a little bit better. So now you're talking guard play. Uh, you know, Xavier Johnson is going to start with him because he's going to be the starting point guard. And the one thing I noticed from the stat sheet from Syracuse the other night was Xavier Johnson didn't turn the ball over very much. The turnovers came from the big guys down inside, which is where we should be running our offense through race and trace. They are the guys that need to be, you know, handling the offense. But it, it, it shows me that there's still a lack of this floor general mentality. Our point guard should be, you know, controlling the, the passing game, the flow of the game. And, and we've really not got to that point yet. Um, today, that's where I want to see a step forward. I want to see Xavier. I want to see Rob uh, and even our our youngest uh, our youngest insert to the point guard role. And I can't get his name off my tongue right at the moment because he, uh, good and gracious, I can't get, I am, well, I'm bad this morning. Noon is horrible for me. I can look at his face all day. The kid that came in early, I'll get it out. Jonathan, good morning. Uh, ready for some conference basketball today. I need to get off of that. I was just speaking to the turnovers and how we need our point guard to step up a little bit today. <coughs> we need to keep improving from what we did the other night. And let's talk about the good the other night. The good the other night was, A, we took a beating in the first half. Played god-awful basketball in the first half. And we made it a point to come back. Uh, got back. We got a lead. You know, we actually forced overtime. Um, Christian Lander. There it is. Christian Lander makes the clutch free throw and then bangs one off the rim. Trace gets the rebound and get and gets fouled to get this thing to another overtime. 
you know, we got all kinds of excitement to look forward to today. These kids are starting to play together a little bit, but I want to see improved point guard play. I want to see some improved, not necessarily improved defense, but I want to see the defense uh, getting out on this uh, on this freshman Bryce McGowan's uh, and this uh, senior Alonzo Verge. I want to see them slow their guard play down a little bit. Uh, I think our big guys are playing well inside. I want to see how well our guards can do. We got to slow down the three point shooting. We can't really have it. Getting ready. It looks like they're getting ready to start the game. We're getting into the announcements portion of it. Hey, if you don't mind today. Please, uh, if, if you like the content, if you love coming in here and hanging out with uh, passionate IU fans, you know, during the broadcast, please feel free to smash that like. Uh, the subscribe button would be really nice. We're going to start doing on some of these games, we're going to start doing some subscriber giveaways in here during um, during some of these live streams at the end of the live streams for the people that are in here all the time and, and kind of come and hang out with us. We feel like that would be a, a good thing to do because, you know, you can watch the game on TV. I'm watching it on TV and, and spend time in here getting ready to start today. The other thing is we're going to get back to finish up turnovers. Got to slow them down today. Last week, last two Tuesday night was unacceptable. We need to be better. Play a full game. Can't have this play 20 minutes of basketball in the big 10. You have got to play a full two halves of basketball. Um, and then the last thing is, it's got to play some defense. Parker Stewart, Xavier Johnson to start with have got to D these guards up really well. I think we're good on the inside. I think it's going to come from the outside. The other thing that Nebraska is susceptible to is having their shots blocked. There's been a lot of, of uh, North Carolina State really locked down the block shots. Trace and Race have been really good about going up straight and blocking the ball. Mike Woodson versus Fred Hoiberg. Fred Hoiberg is going to make a program out of Nebraska. Mark my words, wait and see. They will be there sometime soon. It may not be exactly this year unless this team develops really well. Right on, Tony B. Let's go, IU. But Fred Hoiberg is a good coach. He's an excellent grab. He's been in the NBA. He knows what to do, how to develop players, and he wants winners. That's why this roster changes so drastically every year. We're getting ready for tip. Looks like Trace is getting ready to tip it off. <clears throat> Ball's up, controlled by Xavier Johnson in the backcourt. Xavier brings the ball up across the timeline, sets the offense, comes down the left side. Parker Stewart's at the point or at the top of the key, gets off to Trace at the top of the key. Trace drives the left lane, gets into the lane, puts up a layup, and it is good. No defense whatsoever to stop him right there. He looks like he can dominate that all by himself. What's up, Alex? Two to nothing. Uh, I don't know if this is going to show the score or not. If not, I'll have to fix it at halftime. 2-0. Here comes Nebraska down the court really fast, drives the lane, passes over the left wing, back out to the to the left wing itself. Sorry. They're reversing the ball back and forth, moving it pretty quick. Got the ball to the top of the key. Handoff, dribbles right, going up for a layup. Throws it to the left corner, does not get a shot, gets called for the charge. Xavier Johnson took the charge right there, and that's the first turnover for um, Nebraska. Also, that was a foul on McGowan's, which they cannot afford. Good defense. <coughs> All right, here we go. 1933. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That basket didn't count. They called Trace for a travel. Okay. Goodness. Race is going to be taking the ball out. Xavier Johnson is there. I don't know what they're doing. I'm not sure what that meant. The referees are already having some issue today. Officiating the other night was god awful. Uh, by the way, the game is on Big Ten Network today. Uh, Trace has got the ball to the left wing, hands off to Xavier, drives it down to the post, gives it to Race Thompson on the post. Race is backing his defender down, backs him down with a little right-handed hook shot, and that is good. Now that's the first basket of the game. Race Thompson scores, 19-17 to go in the first half. The scoreboard on here isn't updating either, so I don't know if that first basket counted or not. This is going to be one of these days. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, Nebraska's got the ball on the right wing. Goes over, drives into the lane, puts up a shot, and I believe he drew a foul. Looks like Xavier got his hand on him. Looks like he's going to pick up a quick foul. Or doesn't, it, like I said, I can't hear, so we'll go from there. Yeah, they had the clock issue, Tony, and then 
Then the scoreboard wasn't even updating properly. Burge is at the free throw line, hits the first free throw. So yeah, like I said, dribble penetration and these guards, the way they are gonna they're gonna attack the basket. It's gonna be a, a tough, tall task. He hits both free throws, race takes the ball out of bounds. Xavier Johnson brings crop ball across the timeline. Uh, Nebraska's in the man to man. Parker gets it on the right wing. Parker's got his dribble going, looking for somewhere to go with the ball. Top of the key to Trace. Trace over to Race near the left wing. Race drives down a little bit, hands off to Miller Cop. Miller Cop drives the baseline, throws it over to the right corner. Parker Stewart dribbles, steps back, 18 footer, hired off the iron, rebound to Nebraska. Didn't look real fluent, but it was not a bad shot. Uh, right wing, Burge has got the ball. He's looking for somebody to pass it to. Back up to the top of the key now. I don't know all the Nebraska players yet, so, yeah, I'll try that. Um, Alex, give me just a sec. Dribbles off his leg in the right corner. Gets the ball into the middle. Trace is in defense. Trace goes straight up. He alters the shot, and uh, Race Thompson controls. Hands off to Xavier. Xavier to Miller Cop. Cop inside to Trace. Trace gets hacked, but then no call. Well, let him play a little bit. They get down. Burge is set up. Looks like he wants to shoot. Nobody come to defend him. Over to the top of the key. Hand off on the right-hand side. And there's a three-pointer up and ugly-looking shot. Ugly-looking shot. I'll find that page here in just a second. Xavier drives in on the baseline. Looks. Passes out to Miller. Caught for three. Hard off the back iron. Xavier controls the rebound. Xavier resets the offense at the top of the key. Everybody goes back into position. Xavier's got the ball out near the timeline. Passes over to Miller on the right wing. Miller down to Trace on the block. Trace is on the block. Defense is there. Double team comes. Back over to Xavier. Over to Parker. Down to Miller in the left wing. Miller takes two dribbles inside. Puts up an eight-footer. Misses it. Uh, looked like Race got pushed out of the way. But, hey, this is basketball. Uh, Nebraska drives up all the way down. Gets it into the left corner. Brings it back out. Tries to get around Trace. Guard on a... I get a guard on a, a center. They get a shot from the right wing. Money for three. Try to refresh that scoreboard, see if that helps. That does help. It's still a little slow. Thanks, Alex. Wasn't even thinking. Xavier Johnson puts up a shot. He gets partially blocked. Controlled by Nebraska. Five to two, Nebraska's lead going forward here. They still haven't updated that thing fast enough for us. Looks like over on the left wing, they got the ball driving on Parker Stewart. Puts up a floater off the backboard. Uh, Xavier Johnson controls, pushes it to Trace for the – oh, no foul? Okay. Uh, threw the alley up to Trace, and he missed the, the layup. Looked like he got a little push there, but, hey, it's better than the other night. Uh, Verge drives the ball into the right corner, puts up another – they pass out for another three. They get an offensive board and a layup. Nebraska is up seven to two. Uh, not looking great this as a, for, so far today. Man, it's a little rough being early. Miller Cop gets called for the travel across the free throw line. Come to our first timeout here. Uh, man, uh, not a very started out really good. Doesn't look really good right now. But you know what? Let's let's see what the timeout brings. Let's see how we come out after the timeout. Also, you need to scroll back down on it. It's a little off. What do you mean it's a little off? Uh, yeah, a little rough there, Tony. Um, Got to get under control. And already, you know, travels has been, uh, you know, two turnovers right there off the get-go. You know, just fundamental basketball. Let me see, Alex. Let's see if I can fix what you're talking about. Uh, uh, there, is that better? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. I think. Pretty sure. Well, you know what, Tony, I'll tell you what, the reason why it got here fairly fast is because they're not they're not blowing the whistle every two seconds like they did the other night. 
I mean, in all honesty, the other night was as bad of officiating as I've ever saw. Um, you know, that may have been some good Pac-12 officiating, but that was not Big Ten style officiating. Big Ten, you get to play a little bit. Uh, you're allowed a little contact. That game there was as ticky-tack as I've ever seen. Speaking of which, uh, you know, everybody talks about that game, and we were looking at it as, <laughs> yeah, we were looking at that game as as though, you know, it's a game we should win. Everybody's talking about how how, how strong Syracuse or how much they've struggled so far this year and the losses that they've had are bad losses. But you got to remember, Jim Beheim is an excellent coach. Jim Beheim does not recruit crap players. Jim Beheim always has a competitive program. They may not start off well because these guys are coming into an, you know this new environment, but they develop as the season goes on. If you go back to all the IU programs of the past, you know, especially in the Bob Knight era, there was a lot of years that we were not supposed to be that good. But through through practice and continuity and, and playing with one another, those guys got better. And what happened was is that, you know, that they would develop an identity. And then once they figured out what they were good at and how they could win basketball games, they were disciplined enough to follow through with the game plan week in and week out. Yeah, or what's up, Jake ZZ Funk? Just wanted to say hi. Can't stay along, but go Big Red. Yeah, I actually even got me a Big Red for today's game. Go Big Red, bro. Right, and there's the other part of that, man. Playing on the road in the Carrier Dome. Here comes uh, Burge across the timeline. Xavier Johnson in defense. He drives him. Xavier gets moves, puts with him, gets him back into the lane, gets the ball about 12 foot on the switch. Got him to switch off. Trace was no match for him. His quickness. Nine to two. Uh, let's see. Xavier Ball has got the ball on the right wing. Looking at Race at the top of the key. Race is looking somebody to pass it to. Passes to Parker on the left wing. Parker dribbles a little bit. Looking for somewhere to go. Nowhere to go right now. Goes over to Xavier on the right wing. Xavier makes a bad pass, but there's going to be a foul called on number 11. Looks like that. That's the second team foul on Nebraska. The ball will be taken out underneath the goal with 20 seconds on the shot clock. 15-24 left to go. 9-2 Nebraska. There is that outlet pass or a alley -oop pass to Trace. Trace can play over this team. I know. Alex, that's pretty cool. I thought about it when I was at the store this morning. 9-4. Here comes Nebraska. Top of the key. Xavier's on verge on the post. They like to post their guards. I've noticed that they like to get their guards in the lane. There was a good defense. Trace gets the ball, hands off to Xavier. Xavier comes across the timeline. Nothing going on the fast break. Xavier drives the baseline, gets over in the corner, takes a shot, kind of a bad shot. Uh, Nebraska controls the rebound. Oh, almost a steal by Parker Stewart. Here comes the ball in the outlet. Nebraska's on the run, going up for a layup, gets blocked by Trace. Um, Ray Thompson gets the rebound, hands it off to Xavier Johnson, over to Parker Stewart for three. Ooh, rims out. That was a good little transition there. Didn't the shot didn't go down, but that's how you want to play fast-paced basketball right there. That wasn't bad. Here we go again. Nebraska resets, gets into their offense. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Picks up his dribble, passes off. Here comes I don't know all these guys' names yet. I'm gonna learn them. They got the ball at the top of the key. Verge drives the left wing, trying to penetrate, passes off and gets blocked by Race Thompson. Here comes Parker Stewart. Down the lane, hands off to Miller Cobb. Miller Cobb almost loses it out of bounds. And Miller Cobb makes a very bad pass, and we have a turnover. Here comes three on one. McGowan goes up, gets the basket and the foul. Xavier Johnson uh, picks up his second foul, it looks like. This kid, Burge, is defending. Yeah, they said he banged knees. As far as I know, he looks good. I haven't seen anything to, to tell to the otherwise. Going to go for the three-point play here, 11-4 with 13.56. And it looks like Rob Fennessey is in the game. Let's see if he can run the point a little better, play some defense. Fennessey's going to bring the ball up the court. Brings across the timeline and sets the offense. Cop's coming around the screen, passes to the right wing to Cop. Cop is out there, pick set. Cop tries to dribble. Back over to Trace, makes a bad pass. Cop, that's his Cop's third turnover, I think. Uh, 
Nebraska comes up, pushes it, reset, sets the offense at the top, handoff dribble drive, going up for in the lane. Nobody passed to, gets it over, passes around the horn, top of the key, drives, takes a 12-footer, hits it. Down 10, guys. We are down 10. Tennessee brings the ball across the timeline. It, they just look out of sorts today so far. Tennessee stops, pulls up for three. Hard off the back iron was not a very good shot. Looking awful bad right now. Nebraska's got the ball on the right wing. Dribble drive down on towards the baseline, into the corner, passes it off. So there's a switch on defense. They reverse the ball to the left side, back to the top of the key, looking for penetration. Starts his drive. Gets the ball down. It's on the ground. Nobody sees it. Drives up there. Takes a 23-footer. Hard off the back iron. Parker Stewart with the rebound. 14-4. Down 10. 12-36 to go in the half. Here we come. Brings the ball up. Nobody seems to be running the offense very well right now. It, it there doesn't seem to be nobody's really moving. Uh, Trey sets a screen. Moves off. Miller should have traveled. That was a travel. He slid his pivot foot, but he didn't get called. And there we go. My gosh, my TV just went out. Big Ten Network is currently unavailable. Please try back again later. Oh, gosh. Let me see if I can get it up on the computer. Holy crap. That's what I get for trusting my cable provider. Uh, hang on. I'll get it. It's going to be on a delay. Let's see. I got it coming up on the stream. Yeah, I, I'll big B, Big Ten Network just went out. I don't even know if I'll be able to see it here on uh, the on the uh, on the computer or not. Let's see what happens. We're at commercial. Yeah, look at this. It, you know, it's reminiscent of the first half the other day. Very slow starting. Oh, here we go. Where are we at? Uh, Twelve minutes to go. Looks like uh, fin oh gosh, it's so hard seeing it small. Parker Stewart's got the ball on the left wing, gets it down, almost stolen away. Trace has got the ball, 18 foot dribble drive, spin move into the lane, and rims out. Race cannot get the rebound. Uh, you know Nebraska's rebounding very well. They are they're holding their own right now on the rebounding end. And Nebraska brings the ball up, takes a long three pointer off the iron. Parker Stewart with the rebound. Here comes IU. And it's not like Nebraska's playing outstanding. They're just making a few more shots. Looks like we got a timeout. <coughs> Mike Woodson looks a little upset right now. Not sure what he's going to do to to settle this down. Yeah, yeah, Tony, I'm going to be on that. This is my delay for the next few minutes, so you may not – May not spoil me too much because I'm hopefully I'll get my Big Ten network back. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'd much rather do it off the TV set than the the computer because the stream's at least you know closer to live. Yeah, Jeff, Alex, and I. This is both a little bit early for us to be on the broadcast you know format today. So anyway, we're gonna one of these one o'clocks and these twelve o'clock games. Hey, JB, no problem, brother. It's just a little frustrating when your cable network drops your game. I would show you on the camera, but it'd be hard for me to move it since it's mounted. But, yeah, it's uh, – I don't know what happened. Yeah, I can't. It says try again, so – Looks like we're still at the commercial break. Ah, man, I'm telling you, let me get a box score over here so I can complain a little bit. Haven't complained much yet. Yeah, just just no continuity. Uh, you know, it's it's back to one of my points of the game today. 
I really, yeah, no doubt, JB. Good luck with that, bro. Getting your money back. Yeah, it's it, it, it it's tough. She is she she works early sometimes, uh, Jeff, but she is not an early bird for sure. Yeah, it's uh oh, I got to go back to the feed here. Nope, still at the break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far that I can oh, this doesn't give me the stat that I want. Well, let's just say the shooting's got awful. We've already got a couple extra fouls, and one of those fouls did not go on Xavier Johnson. It went on Parker Stewart, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's cool, Jeff. I, I like hanging out with you, too. So far today, you know, we should be, you know, right there with them, and it's not been looking pretty whatsoever. And I don't have a box score here. Let's try this one. Nope, not you. Let's try you right there. Oh, man, JB, don't even want to give me. you trying to get me ranting today is what he's trying to do. Even my, even my stream is having pop problems today. I don't know what's going on here. It's just, there we go. Nebraska's got the ball, drives in the lane. First thing I see is him throw up a layup and missed it. Outlet to Race Thompson, brings across the timeline. Looks like Tamar Bates is in, down into the corner. Lee Anthony Leal is in. The ball gets, Trace gets triple teamed and gets stolen away. What the heck, all the way end to end, nobody picks up on defense and they score a layup. 16 to 6 right now, guys. Uh, that was ugly, what I just saw. I'm going to make this bigger so I can watch it a little better. That didn't help. There we go. Tamar Bates gets up, puts up the three. Long off the iron. Long rebound. Here comes Nebraska pushing the ball up. Uh, this Verge, the little point guard, is quick, and he goes to the hole. Takes an eight-footer. Floats off the iron. Race Thompson with the rebound and outlets to Leal. Leal to Tamar. Tamar Bates with the fast break basket. Good job. 16-8, to 9.45 to go in the first half. Nebraska brings the ball across the timeline. Anthony Leal is, they put him on the verge, kid. Uh, Fennessey is in the other corner. They're driving around. There's a three-point shot from the wing, hard off the iron. Trace chases down the rebound, but it goes out of bounds, and it's Indiana's ball. All right, let's put together two good possessions here, two in a row. That was a good rebound, an outlet pass. Leal brought the ball up and hit Tamar Bates on the run for the layup. It was a really nice play, young guys. All right, here comes Rob Fennessey bringing the ball across the timeline. Jordan Geronimo is now in the game as well. Fennessey takes it over to the left wing, dribb dribbles back right, over to the right wing. Leal for three, money. That boy can shoot. I wish. I hope he gets his defense up. Anthony Leal for the three-pointer, 16-11. to 9.06 to go in the first half. Here comes Nebraska again. We're on a little bit of a run here. Let's see if we can get another stop. Fennessey's got good defensive position. Pick comes. Trace switches out. Got Trace on the guard. There's a big man. There's a mismatch underneath, but they don't see it. Trying, They can't get him the ball. Here comes uh, Dribble on the left side. Gets the ball down on the block. Passes off. That looks like a travel. Big guy tried to dribble the ball with a guard in defense, and he took an extra step, lifted his pivot foot. 16-11, 8.47 left to go. Man, this shot from Anthony Leal is pure. The kid has got to find – you know what? Let's let's see what he can do as opposed to Parker Stewart right now. Give him to the give him that shooting opportunity. Finnis, he's at the top of the key with the ball, dribbles to the right wing, looking for somebody to pass to, gets it down to Trace near the block. Trace has got the ball. No double, double team comes. Passes out. Tamar Bates on the right wing has got the ball. Looking for Trace down inside. Tamar steps back and shoots. Hard off the iron. Geronimo cannot compete for the rebound for a good block out. Here comes Nebraska. Tamar drives in the lane. Here comes Verge. Looking for a shot. 
Gets it knocked away by Leal. Leal gets the steal, passes it off to Tamar Bates, and it goes right off Tamar's fingers out of bounds. That's two good plays from Anthony Leal. Two good plays, two good passes, and one good shot. One of them didn't finish because Tamar couldn't hold on to it, and it, it hit him right in the hands, too. But Anthony Leal gets his hands in there. That's what you're supposed to do. Kid's hungry, wants some playing time. Everybody else has got to, got to pick it up a little bit. He's playing ball right now. Here we go again across the timeline. Let's hope his defense holds. Nebraska's got the ball to run the handoff at the top of the key. Dribbles right. McGowan steps back for a 19-footer off the iron. Uh, Michael Durr with the rebound. Here comes Rob Fennessey up the court. Fennessey's got the ball on the right wing. Dribbles back to the center. Over to Geronimo. Geronimo to Leal. Leal down to Durr on the block. Durr's got the ball. Dribble, dribble. Trying to get a shot. Puts up a right-handed hook and makes it. Good play by Michael Durr. Used his size advantage. Didn't rush it. Made a good shot. 16 to 13 with 7.33 to go in the half. Verge has the ball on the top of the key, looking for somebody to pass to. Hands it off to the number 13. Looks like that's Derek Walker. Derek Walker dribbles and falls down, but they're going to – what do they call? Travel? Oh, he's holding his knee. Not sure what happened there. He's walking it off. Uh, looks kind of – I'm not sure what happened. Let's see. Oh, this is the Durr shot. Durr played it really good. He, he, he went straight up, shot a little floating hook shot, which is probably one of his fortes, and gets it knocked in. We'll knock this back down for a second. Nope. That's not the button I wanted. This one. Yes. So go back over to here so I can see for a second. There we go. Yeah, you're right, Tony. Bench is starting to play a little bit of ball right now. Hey, like I said, this, you know, when these guys sit on the bench, let's talk about that for a second. Bench play in the Big Ten is huge. Uh, if you watched that game last night, it was absolutely huge in the in Iowa coming back. Uh, they had one of their guys off the bench come in and play really good down on the post, which is something they were needing. So bench play plays a big part. That's why these early season games, getting your bench acclimated to the big game is important. Anthony Leal has not got the playing time, but here's the thing. Anthony Leal is hungry. I can tell by the way he is. He's a competitor. He wants to play. Hey, his defensive skills aren't great. I know why he's not playing. However, it's not that he doesn't want to. It's just that he's not getting, you know, he's not getting in the games right now. So, you know, he's got to earn that. Gets in the game today. As long as he doesn't make defensive mistakes, he'll stay on the floor and he'll get his chance to play. I like the fact that I like the fact that Mike Woodson is trying different combinations of players from the bench. And, 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 you know, like, you know, a Christian Lander, I don't know if there's something wrong with him or not, but he didn't come out. He wasn't on the court first today. As far as the point guard, uh, fantasy was back on the, on the court first. Then you get, then you see Anthony Leo come in the game, you know, just, yes. You know what? And there you go. You guys got to know what your role is. Tamar Bates is still a freshman. And he's got a little bit of angst. When he lets the game come to him, he's a much better player. Um, also, Miller Cop is the same way. Miller Cop, he needs to be in good rhythm of the game or he's not. He doesn't play well. So to let the game come to you is one thing. Jordan Geronimo looks a little bit, I don't know, dude. I'm still, I'm still on a Taco Bell commercial from the stream. And uh, my Big Ten network is completely out. I don't even know. This is... This is actually bogus. I'm not here in a little bit. I might put this on pause <coughs> and reset my cable box and see if that actually helps. Uh, looks like we're back, getting ready to have coverage here. Let me move this over out of the way. Right there. There we go. All right, looks like we're getting ready to start back up here. 16 to 13, good response. Nebraska's got the ball at the top of the key, trying to get off to the left. Leal's in defense. Walker's got the ball at the top of the key, passes off to Verge. Verge drives the lane. She throws up a layup, gets around Fennessey and scores. 18 to 13, Nebraska, 7 6 to go in the first half. Poise, boys, play with some poise. Fennessey brings the ball down on the left side. Durr sets a, or Geronimo sets a pick for Leal, gets off of it. Fennessey still driving the ball. Fennessey takes it all the way across to Leal in the corner, all the way around the horn. Tamar Bates for three. Money. 
That was a good passing right there. That's what you need to do. Four passes. 18 to 16, the Braxton is up by two. Oh, my God, I just dropped my stream again. What is going on here? Are you serious? Please, uh, my God, what is this? Is what the heck? Oh, here we go. They brought it back. They they must have sent it to commercial accidentally. Nice going. Uh, 18, 16, 639. Nebraska's got the ball at the top of the key. Driving in the lane, puts up a layup, and they score. They're just driving in and scoring. With Trace and Race not in the game, we do not protect the middle of the court as well as we do when they are in the game. So these guards are driving the hoop. Fennessey over to Leal on the left wing. Leal's got the ball looking for somebody to pass to. Here comes a pick. Passes over to Tamar. Tamar to Fennessey in the corner. Fennessey gets stopped, but I think he gets a foul for the block. What a passing sequence. Fantasy drove, passed it all the way around the horn. Geronimo to Bates. Bates hits the three. Tamar Bates has got tons of talent. He's just got to learn how to play within himself a little bit, and he's going to be a great player. He's got tons of potential. Geronimo with a quick shot on the inbound. Durr gets the rebound. He gets his arm help, falls to the ground, passes to Fantasy. Fantasy to Leal. Bates has got the ball in the corner. Bates is looking for his shot, drives. Nothing there in the corner. Passes to Durr. Durr around the horn. Geronimo's got the top of the key. Hands off to Leo. Leo gives it to Fennessy on the left wing. Here comes a pick. Fennessy's back to the top. Four seconds to go. Three, two, one. Fennessy shoots the last second, and it's an air ball. Shot clock was winding down. Nobody was really getting open for a shot. That's what happens. I like the scoreboard that Fox uses. I'm going to try that here in a minute. Fennessey goes back to the bench. Here comes Xavier Johnson. 5.51 left to go in the half. We are down four. Let's see if we can respond. Xavier Johnson's back in his full port press trying to make Verge work, which I like that. Here comes the ball up the court. It's just a little basic man-to-man -man press. Comes across. There's a pick. Verge drives the lane, and he's going to get called for the travel. That He bumped off of... Uh, he bumped off of Johnson. I thought they may call the foul, but then he took an extra step. Nope, that's good. That's a good no call. Xavier was straight up and down. He put his shoulder into him. Xavier looks like he's taking offense to this guy. Pretty quick little guard that they got. Xavier brings the ball across the timeline. Geronimo's on the left wing. Pitt comes to the front of the right to Dirt. Dirt falls back to the block. Gets the ball from Leal. Draws a foul. Anthony Leo got that pass and released that down onto the block to Michael Durst so fast. It, it was like he knew what he was going to do before he got the ball. You don't get named Indiana Mr. Basketball for nothing. To, uh, Xavier Johnson for three on the inbound. Geronimo with the rebound puts it up and in. Geronimo had good defensive position for the rebound and got the layup. 2018, 517 to go in the first half. This is driving me bonkers with not having my, my TV up. Tamar Bates is in coverage. Long three-point shot by Nebraska. Hard off the iron. Anthony Leal with the rebound. Outslets to Xavier Johnson. Johnson drives the lane over to Tamar Bates. Tamar Bates steps back. Hands off to Xavier. Reset the offense. Left wing Bates got the ball on the block. Geronimo's got it. Geronimo gets it stolen on a bad pass. There's going to be a foul. Geronimo fouls out of frustration. On the, when the fast break started. Yeah, so, you know, Geronimo gets the ball taken away on the outlet pass to Tamar Bates off the block when the double team come, but he should have made a bounce pass, making the, the little flip arm chest pass that's going to get taken. When you, these defenders got their arms out, they're, they're there to, that's the pass they're taking away. you got to go up or over or under. Uh, Walker's got the ball at the top of the key, hands it off. Here comes McGowan's got the ball driving the lane. Tamar Bates, there's a steal by Miller Cop. No, Race Thompson. Maybe it's the dunk. 20 all, tied it back up. 4.30 to go in the half. Let's get to this under four timeout, and let's see if we can take control before the end of the half. The crowd at Assembly Hall comes to their feet, cheering them on. There's the end of the pass going down. Drives the lane, puts up the layup, misses the layup. And there's the, Race Thompson has it. He's going to bring the fast break. All that to Tamar Bates on the wing for three. Yes. Tamar Bates buries a three timeout in Nebraska before the four-minute timeout. So we're going to get two here in just a minute. 
Indiana is joining. I think that's going to be their just their second lead of the game, 23 to 20, while this timeout goes. Hey, I'm going to stop the camera here for a second, and I'm going to reset my cable box, see if that fixes my problem. I will leave the mic on, be right back. 20 to 23, 410 left to go in the half. Tamar Bates is putting a little spark into it. All right, I think I got my cable box. I don't know why I changed channels on it and come back, and it looks like it's back up now, so I can drop this stream out because I hate double streaming. It's it seems like it's problematic most of the time. Okay, let me turn the camera back on here. Whoo, man, that's a good series. Yeah, I, yeah, I think okay, Tony. Well, I had to I had to bring the stream up full screen because I couldn't quite see it really well, but uh, we've now. I think I'm back on, on point with you, Tony, so that's going to be good. The only delay now will be the delay that's in the stream itself. StreamYard is about a 7 to a 10-second delay mainly. So let me get let me get Nebraska. Let me get this shut down here so I don't have to so I don't have to pay the penalty for it here. All right. Bring that back up in case my stream goes out or in case my cable goes back out. Hey, anybody? <laughs> hey, dude. You know what? I'm here to I'm here to call a I'm here to call a basketball game. But you know what? I'm tired of. I don't. I I've really gotten to the point where I don't like the national announcers. Um, you know, I don't mind Stephen Bardo because he's a really good commentator. Free throws up and missed. Here come oh well that's from Nebraska NC State game. I'm sorry. I, I just saw it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if I was that far behind or not. I get I I really, you know what? There needs to be a little bit more excitement from the from the call, honestly. You get it from the radio sometimes, but here comes Nebraska across the timeline. Xavier Johnson defending on Burge, hands off to the top of the key. They're running the weave a little bit. Burge has got the ball back just right at the top of the key. Dribbles over, passes to the left-hand side of McGowan's. McGowan's goes around. Looks like into the corner. Tamar Bates is in defense there. Takes an 18-footer. Hard off the back iron. Race gets the rebound. Race is playing pretty good on the boards. Race is just going to bring the ball up. Might as well. He's got, he's got good dribbling skills. Oh, man. There was a no call. Okay, here comes Xavier. Got the ball at top, out there. Man, my <laughs> Indiana's on a 7-0 run, by the way, guys. Kicking it into gear. Tamar Bates is looking for somebody to pass to. No shot there. Over to Leo. Leo feeds it into Trace for the alley-oop. Just a little overthrew him. Not bad, though. He should have brought it down and went up and missed it. Comes up. Here comes on the fast break. Nebraska drives the lane. Burge goes up. Race affects the shot. Trace gets the rebound. Out to Xavier. Xavier drives the lane. Looking, looking. Takes it all the way to the hole. Off the rim. No good. Here comes Burge back the other way. Running and sprinting. Trying to get it up. Oh, and Xavier Johnson steals the ball. But he calling for a foul. A little bit out of control there. But uh, the the pass that Leo made to Trace was pretty good. It was just a little overthrown. I think that was more like a travel, but hey, we'll call it what it is. You know, not a hard fouling half. Five in team fouls for IU, three for uh, Nebraska. Drives the lane. Trace puts his hand up, affects the shot, but it does go in off the backboard. 23-22, 2.52 left in the half. Here we come up with the ball. Got a chance to get, get that basket back. Fennessey goes over to Race Thompson. Fennessey drives the lane. Miss, or cut, comes off the pick down the lane. Doesn't get there. Anthony Leal goes across the timeline over to Race. Race has got the ball looking. He's driving in on the dribble. Gets inside the lane. Nowhere to go. Outside to Tamar. Tamar tips it, saves it. Tries to dribble. There's a double team. Gets back out of it. Steps back looking for three. And hits it. Oh, my God. Off balance three-point shot for Tamar Bates. Tamar Bates is obviously feeling it. You can see it in his eyes today that he's motivated. Here we come again. Verge is bringing the ball up the timeline. Fennessey's right there in his face. Not giving him much room. There's, I don't know what the hell that was. 
Here we go. Verge drives the lane, over, passes back out, hands off to him again, over to the right-hand wing, down on the block. Trace has got him pushed out a little bit. He drives the lane. There's a knock pass, tips out to Verge. Verge has the ball, nowhere to go, passes it back out. Five seconds on the shot clock. McGowan's got the ball from 26. Hard off the back iron, Trace with the rebound. Trace is going to outlet the ball to Fennessey. Fennessey comes across the timeline. 141 left to half, 26-22 IU. Fennessey to race. Race will shoot the three. That was a good shot. It just didn't go. Rimmed out. Here comes McGowan up the right wing. McGowan's is looking to drive. Nowhere to go. Gets cut off. Verge is on the left wing looking for a shot. Nothing there. McGowan's drives the lane. What do they call it? Travel? Yep. Got him for the got him for steps. Hey, I gotta say right now, you know, it's it's not as bad as we've played thus far today. Nebraska looks like they've got a lot of work to do with their team, too. Anthony Leal gets a break, gets a good round of applause as he goes to the bench. Excellent job for Mr. Leal today. I think he will be back in the second half. 122 Corona across the timeline, 26 on the shot clock. Fennessey's got the ball. It takes it over to the right wing. Looking underneath, nothing there. Over to Tamar. Race is at the top of the key. Race has got the ball. They're a daring race to shoot. I would shoot. Just keep shooting it, Race. Over to Fennessey. Fennessey down the block to Trace. Trace has got the ball. Ten seconds. Fennessey for three. Good in rhythm shot. In and out. Here comes Nebraska up the left stretch. Gets the ball over to Verge at the, at the timeline. He's sitting there. Start, resets the offense. Here we go. Uh Verge drives the lane on Fennessey, tries to put it up and in, forces the shot. Race gets the rebound. Good. Man, I love this officiating. By God, it's way better. Here we go. Comes across the timeline. Race has got the ball top of the key, looking inside. Nobody, nothing there. Tamar gets it down to Trace on the block. Trace again, Derek Walker Jr. goes up, misses the shot, tipped out to Verge. Verge starts the fast break. One on Two on three, pulls up for three, misses it. Race Thompson gets the rebound, and we'll get the over-the-back foul on Nebraska. We're at just five fouls apiece. You know what? You know how nice it is that we're not even shooting free throws yet for the last half of the, the first half? My God, to, to let guys play a little bit and just let them have, you know, play ball. Don't see referees are supposed to officiate a game, but they're not to determine the outcome. Finally, they're going to put this kid Verge on the bet on on the bench for a little bit. He has played hard this whole half. Here comes Fennessy. 18 seconds to go. <clears throat> Brings the ball across the timeline. Looking to get everybody out there. Everybody separate out. Gets it over to Tamar Bates with nine seconds. Gets it to Race Thompson at the top of the key. Hands it back to Fennessy with five. Fennessy steps back over to Cop with three. Two. Cop shoots it off the iron. And that will be the half. Hey, you know what? After being down so much early there, we responded fairly well. Hey, at least our drought at the beginning of the game was not as long. I got to say that that is definitely better. Let's get over to get to some of the... Yeah, you know what, JB? That's it, dude. <laughs> Getting called for steps. Gotcha. Yeah, I know, right? But, you know, let, let, the refs need to let them play a little bit. That game the other night in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, who knows how that would have turned out if it would have been a, a little less officiated, right? Because that game was – I don't even know what – I don't even know how to call that – what to say about that game. It was a good game. I appreciated, you know, the effort and, and, and the comeback and everything that went well for Indiana in that game. But, man, you know, at the end of that game, all those fouls were like, it was just who was going to hit free point th or free throws. That, that was all it really came down to. Everybody was mad at officiating. But for IU to come back in the second half in the Carrier Dome against Jim Beheim with his two sons that were absolutely lighting it up, I felt that that was a, a step in the right direction. Getting to today's stats, by the way, let's start with Indiana stats today. I wanted, The one thing I want to see – had 11 turnovers in the first half. I'd love to see that number down where Nebraska's got it. Nebraska's got it at about six. You know what? We had 11 turnovers and five assists. Still not a good half for our team. We did, however, win the rebounding battle, and we only gave one offensive rebound that whole half. That's probably the reason we got the lead right now, just to be fair. 
Uh, Tamar Bates was the spark that we needed off the bench. Hey, I think bench I think the bench play today was one of my keys as well. And bench play so far has really dictated for IU the reason we have the lead because Michael Durr, Tamar Bates, uh, Anthony Leal, that's 11. Jordan Geronimo, that's 11, 13, 15. And that's 18 points. Okay, I think I'm back. I have no idea. Today, there has got to be something wrong with my cable connection or something today because... I, my, my cable boxes went out. I have only, my connection is unstable and I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm not sure what's going on. I, you know what, I'm glad it happened at halftime. Back to where I was at with statistics, 18 points off the bench. We outscored our starters 18 to 8. That's, that's, so there you, that just speaks to depth, right? Uh you know, Race Thompson is doing a good job and has four points. He has seven rebounds. He has assists. But here, here's here's where today, this is what I'm getting at here. The turnovers today, where are they coming from? Trace has got four in the first half. He needs to trim that number back a little bit. Miller Cop has three turnovers. All of them were bad passes and live ball turnovers. Not good. Um, Miller Cop has not found the rhythm of the game yet today. Let's look for him to get going in the second half. Uh, beyond that, tomorrow only had one turnover, and that was a bad pass. Geronimo made one bad pass, and Anthony Leal got charged with the turnover for a bad pass. Um, we only got five assists in the first half, and two of those assists came from Leal off the bench. So we're still struggling in the areas. Our problems aren't going away, guys. They're really not. Our, par our problem right now is point guard play. Yep. Zero points for all of them. Uh, and that's the thing. You know what? Mil or, you know, Xavier Johnson has got to effectively stay on the floor. He's foul happy. Um, he does today not have a turnover. Good on his part. But he also doesn't have any assists, so he's not being effective as a point guard. Anybody that's played point guard today, Fennessey's 0 for 3 from the field. Um, he has a rebound and one assist. No turnovers. I, I got to say, the turnovers are better on the on, on Indiana's end today because it's not as ugly as it was the other day. Uh, our, our front court play has been excellent. Uh, you know, and even the problem is with our front court is that when you take Jackson and you take Race Thompson both out of the game at the same time, you're left with Geronimo and and Durr, and they're not quite the defenders of the paint. They don't have the same they don't have the same straight up and down you know verticality that you know they don't play with the same verticality and they don't move as fast to to pick up on defense. Geronimo is more that he's a little smaller, I think, than those two guys. Uh, but let's look at you know this other team, Nebraska. Now, mind you, Nebraska. That's a pretty high scoring offense. And I and I really don't know all these guys, but uh Derek Walker only had two points in the first half. Uh Bryce McGowan's, he did have six points, and Alonzo Verge had six points. So that's their two leading scorers, to the best of my knowledge. And they've put out some numbers. Uh, the rest of these guys, uh, you know. It's all about the same, but, you know, they're getting a little bench production. They're getting what you expect from the bench. But our bench is the is the deal. But here's the thing, you know, anybody that's out there that's a better, look at it like this. 
this was an 11 and a half point, you know, game. Uh, we're, we're favored by today and we're only winning by four. We came out flat and ugly. And you know what? If I was to break down those stats, I bet the last 10 minutes of, the, of that half was played pretty clean by IU. But here's the thing. We cannot let off on that. We have got to build from that going into the second half today because, hey, I'm, I watched these games last night. I watched Purdue get up by 19 points, and then Iowa come back on the road without their leading score to almost get this game to overtime. You know, this is the Big Ten. These schools in here, they, they do not quit. They do not go away. And Fred Hoiberg, uh, you know, former coach of the Chicago Bulls and Iowa State Cyclones, is a stellar coach. He he's he keeps circling through these players. You know, he has to pick up – he's picking up talent, but guys that aren't quite the right fit, and he just keeps rolling through them. If, you're, if you don't fit here, leave. I mean, that's the other way that it looks. Uh, Wisconsin and Marquette are tied right now, 11-11 in the first half. Really good. Illinois looked like a, a steamroller. You know what? Let's talk about the top of the Big Ten really fast. Illinois with uh, Kofi Coburn and, uh, and the rest of that crew looks really good. Purdue will be the number one team in the country come tomorrow. Congratulations to Matt Painter and company because that's first time in their history that they've ever been ranked number one or will be ranked number one, I should say. Um, you know, so then there, there's that Ohio State comes back and beats Duke in the Big Ten ACC Challenge to knock them off the top pedestal. You know, Indiana right now, in my opinion, looks like a five or a six seed in this conference for the tournament, for our tournament. You know, honest to God. Hey, Tim, nice to see you, buddy. Hey, I just got a chance to go through your catalog of new videos, my friend. Please keep putting it out, brother. It's really nice to see you out there digging and, and, and making content. Alley Cat Treasures, everybody. Just started putting out videos. A little bit of metal detecting and magnet fishing, and he's definitely got a cat that hangs out with him. Thank you, Tim. But at the end of the day, the Ohio State looked really good. Uh, Purdue looks really good. Iowa still looks strong to make that comeback. You know, IU right now is looking like a five or a six in this conference because you. Well, I haven't seen Wisconsin play yet. That's who's next on the list. That'll be a road game where we don't fare very well uh, in their home arena. So I might be throwing stuff if that's. I think that's Tuesday night. Michigan State bully Louisville. Yeah, you know what? You know, I I really got to say though, dude, it, it, straight up, the ACC and the Big Ten. The difference in these two conferences, even in football, it's physicality. Uh, you have to have a you have to have a front court game in the Big Ten to survive. You have to. Uh, you have to be physical. The play in the ACC is just not as physical. The Big East, where St. John's is at, that's a physical conference. It always has been. The Big Ten's a physical conference. Uh, the SEC and the ACC are not as physical based, but they're very good fundamentally conferences. And then, you know, the, the Big 12, who knows what it's going to be. But since uh, my Titans are have probably done for this season, I'm rooting for the Niners now. You know what? I don't think your Titans are done. I think they're going to struggle to the finish line. Hopefully, for your sake, that they make the playoffs and they get the pieces back that they need. But, Geezer, I got to tell you, I think Ryan Tannehill is absolute garbage. I don't think he's the right guy for the job. I never have liked him, not one little bit. And without Derrick Henry, he struggles. You know, you guys just need to pick up a couple more wins to make the playoffs. I mean, that's just it, just a couple more wins. And, and getting into Sunday's games, you know, uh, I think you're on the bye this week. So you got some time to get healthy and get a game plan for the next week. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that you're done, but the Niners look really good. 49ers are playing good football right now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, dude. Yeah, because you know, uh, Indiana Creek Walker, when you read the hype, like, you know, you, you know the you know these guys read Twitter. They're all on Twitter. I watch all their posts. You know, they read uh, ESPN news and and stuff like that when they talk about their basketball team. It's a it's a it's a, a badge of honor to hear your name on TV, right? 
So they hear it, and then you know they're talk they they talk about this team, and then they see they're an eleven and a half point favorite. That you know all the odds and ends, and you come out a little flat. Well, they came out flat against Syracuse because they were told Syracuse, uh, it's halftime, Tim. You know, because Syracuse comes out and plays, you know, out out of their mind in the first half because they wanted to win. They were told they weren't going to win. These kids, coaching in college is not like coaching in the NBA. The NBA is about the best of the best, pure talent-wise, and who has the affinity for the clutch situation and who's going to make the shots. College basketball is more of a psychology type of game for a coach. Not only do you have to be a coach, you've got to be a father figure. You have to be a you have to be everything to that kid in order to get his full confidence and and listening and understanding because you're talking about 18 to 22 year olds. Honestly, college coaches are, are are among the best in the country. And you know what? That's why they don't last in the NBA for the most part because they get t- they don't want to deal with prima donna talented guys that think they don't have to play defense. You got to buy in in college. You know what? That's that's what I really looked forward to, to seeing, and I did not see the last three coaches in IU's uh, tenure here. Well, four if you want to get technical. Is they need a father figure to help them to help them get prepared to be men. They need somebody there to direct them, to teach them, to to get them squared away. Now, once they're men, you know, and and they make make good decisions and they buy into a program. I'm sure every one of these coaches in Division One can flat out coach, but it's their ability to get the kids to buy into the program and know a role and play a role. So Mike Woodson has multiple jobs. So then you then you turn to your assistant coaches like Dane Five. Dane Five is probably the guy running defense practices. He's probably he's probably teaching more of the fundamentals. Woodson's playing dad, you know, and and Dane Five, for lack of a better term, is probably playing mama. You know, hey, get your get your head up, get your posture up, get your hands, get your legs spread out, get your hands out on defense. He's the guy that's sitting there like your mother badgering you about doing your homework at 430 in the afternoon when you just got home from school. Hey, if you don't get it done, then you can't do this. You know, and then there's so many aspects of it. And the one thing we ain't seen yet at Indiana this year is we really don't know. And me being, you know, on the outside of this whole circle and looking in. We do not know the know the effect that Thad Mata's influence is having on this team. You know, that is going to come into play in the coming years because Thad Mata at Ohio State was a great coach. He was an excellent coach. And now he's helping Mike Woodson learn the college game. So there is – I think IU did a really good job. Scott Dolson should be commended for putting together this team of coaching. They're splitting up responsibilities – and they're trying to make these guys, you know, uh, good student athletes. And you know what? I hope the word goes. It comes back to what it did when Knight was coaching, because all you ever heard about was IU's graduation rate. Remember, remember how that used to be such a big deal. IU graduates ninety-seven percent of its kids. That was Bob Knight hung his hat on that. He bought on smart kids. You know, you know, he didn't always go after the best recruits. You know, those guys are hard. You know, very. I mean, I mean. Very rarely did the very top, you know, Jay Edwards and Lyndon Jones, when they came here, that was a big deal. Uh, Oh, my God. Oh, there's dogs on the court. I was freaking out. You know, it wasn't always about the top notch recruits, but it was always the, you know, the the best, the guys that he wanted out of the state of Indiana, he got. And Gene Cady took the took the leftovers. What happened was is near the end of his coaching tenure. What was happening at IU was teams like Michigan State and Ohio State were stealing top-notch recruits out of our state. And that really changed the dynamic of how, of what he had to look for. He had to go other places to get guys sometimes. And But Bob Knight really liked keeping it close to home, and that's what I hope we get back to, control our recruiting in Indiana. But with Purdue having a year like this, it's going to be tough. Uh, Bench scoring is the is the stat. We did not even get to the free throw line. <coughs> so from the thirteen thirty mark to the end of the half, we controlled it. They only scored eight. Nebraska's got the ball at the beginning of the half. Checks in. Verge gets it to uh, 
Walker. Walker drove, drove Pat hands off, gets it down on the link. Walker gets a layup. Uh, Trace went to help, couldn't get back in time. They scored right off the get-go, two-point game. 26-24. Here comes Xavier Johnson to the right wing with the ball. Everybody's running around picks. Trace or Race gets the ball. Parker in the corner for an open three. Money. There it is. Parker Stewart gets wide open in the corner. And Xavier Johnson gets the steal in a layup. Five-point play. Happened so fast I couldn't get it out of my mouth. Here comes McGowan's up the right side with the ball. Hands off to Walker at the mid-stripe. Get over to Burge on the left hand. Back to the top of the key. McGowan's is waiting for a pick. Pick backs off. McGowan's is dribbling against Parker Stewart. Wants to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Drives him. Misses the shot. That looks like Trace knocked it out of bounds off with Walker. 24 to 31. Man, that was so quick. Uh, Parker, or uh, Xavier Johnson just stole that ball. Here it goes. Here comes Verge driving the lane. There's a foul on Xavier Johnson. If he would have just held his position instead of pushing his chest out. Colin, nice to see you, brother. I'll be checking on your Louisville Cardinals later today. There it is. See it right there. Lunge that chest forward, and they're going to call in for that every time. And straight to the bench he goes, frustrated today. Fennessey's back on Verge. Verge drives around him, gets picked, cut off, cut off, and he turning around, jump shot, good. Here comes Fennessey. What's going on? Got a stoppage in play, 26 to 31. Looks like we got 1853 to go in the first half or in the second half here. Here we go. Uh, Xavier or Fennessey's got the ball coming out of the off the stripe, driving up to midcourt, comes across the timeline down the right hand side, passes off to race, race over to Miller Cop, cop back to Fennessey on the left wing. Fennessey drives around a double pick, looks, passes over to race. Race will take the three, hard off the iron. Defensive rebound for Nebraska. Here comes McGowan, center court. Driving up the lane, goes around to pick, looks, overthrows his guy, but Walker controls the tip. Here comes Race with the ball. Race outlets to Parker. Parker has over to Race again. Race drives the lane, turn around, goes up, floater, and good. Race Thompson with the athletic move on the spin shot there gets a layup and the foul. A little bit different level of intensity coming out in the second half for IU. Dude, Race Thompson is, is a big body athletic man. Look at that spin move on my – oh, my gosh, that was a good move. Yeah, right on. I'm glad he did not go to Minnesota, honestly. Here he goes. He's set up for his free throw. 33-26. to 26. Free throw is up, and it is good. 18-19 to go. 34-26. Indiana's got their biggest lead of the game up to eight. Here comes McGowan up against Fennessey across the timeline. Now, there's a big height difference in this one. McGowan's is like 6'7". Fennessey's like 6'1". So he drives the left, goes left around the pick. Trace picks him up, goes around again. Robson, double team comes, outlet to Walker. Trace gets called for the foul, and they're going to go for their own three-point play. Vinny Blake Griffin. That's a really good comparison, to be honest. Blake Griffin, I will say, is probably a little more athletic. But that's a very good comparison. Derek Walker against NC State had 12 points and 13 rebounds. Going up for his three-point shot, or his third shot. Hard off the iron. Trace controls the rebound. Oh, oops, excuse me. Outlets to Fennessey. Fennessey's going to bring it across the timeline. Gets the ball in to Indiana's court. Sets the offense 20 seconds on the shot clock. Outlet pass to Parker Stewart on the right wing. Pitt comes. Parker drives left, drives into the lane, gets into the middle, over to race, race back over to oh, over to Fennessey. Fennessey traveled. Shuffled his pivot foot. Doesn't like the call. 17.43 to go. Let's uh, get a defensive stop here. Let's let's play some D. That's where you can control a game is on the defensive end. You don't have to play great offense to win a game. Walker's got the ball at the top of the key, hands off for the three-point shot, in and out. Trace has the rebound, looks like he's going to bring the ball up himself. Everybody else took off. Miller cops got it, drives around right, drives into the lane. Oh, my God, Miller, what is wrong with you? 
Miller Cop just threw it away. There was nobody there because he was playing out of control. Miller Cop has not been good with the basketball today. 34 28. You know, you would think that you would get away from your starters pretty quick if they're struggling. Here comes McGowan's with Fennessy on him, looking for somebody to pass to. Nobody's moving. Takes goes around a pick, looks to drive. Fennessy cuts him off. They're going to call Fennessy for the hand check. And I'm sorry, not McGowan's. That's Burge. My bad. Right. I guess there. Yep, right there. Walker's got the ball. Hangs off, hands it off to go around to Burge on the right wing. Burge drives the baseline off his dribbles off his foot. There's a three point shot. No good. Trace gets the rebound, hands off to Fennessy. Fennessy pushes up to Parker. Parker drives. That should have been a travel. Whew. Over around the horn, Miller Cobb's got the ball. Don't dribble, young man. Find somebody to pass to. There's a double team. Gets it off to Trace. Trace goes up for the layup. Missed the layup, but the foul will be called on Derek Walker. Looks like Trace is going to shoot some free throws. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday night, Trace had 31. Cop had 28. Stewart had 20. Today, they got seven points between all three. Oh, I can't breathe today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Trace is at the free throw line. First shot is up, and it is good. <clears throat> Derek Miller will take a seat on the bench. Second free throw is up, and it is also good. Trace got his fifth and sixth points of the game, 36-28. Back to our largest lead. Here comes Burge across the timeline with Fennessey in check. Tries to, oh, Fennessey falls down. Burge drives the lane, gets a layup. That kid is quick. Fennessey stumbled for a second, and he made it all the way to the goal. 36-30, 16-15 to go in the half, or the game. Race has got the ball, hands off to Fennessey. Fennessey drives around the left side, looking for, shoots the three. Fennessey hits his first three-pointer today, step back three. Pretty sweet looking shot. He's feeling a little frustrated. He's got a time to make up. Nine-point lead. Now we've got the biggest lead of the game. Here it comes. He, Fennessey is manning up to him, but he is very quick. And he goes around him. Fennessey knocks the ball away. We are at our under-16 timeout. Indiana is enjoy, enjoying its largest lead of the game today, 39-30. to 30. As this Alonzo Verge kid is quick with the basketball. You know, he, he has a lot of the, the characteristics that I expect Fennessey to play with. We are on timeout here with a 39-30 lead in the second half. Um, better game today, but, but our scoring is not coming from the same places. It's coming from all around. Uh, our bench has been dominant in this game um, today. Just to say, Fennessey and Lille each have three off the bench. Uh, Durr has two, Geronimo has two, and Tamar Bates has 11. I expect to see Tamar in the game really soon. But, you know, that's uh, 3, 6, 10. That's 21 of your 30, 39 points right there. And we're still at the halftime. Hey, by the way, anybody that's in here today, if you would not mind, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider hitting the subscribe button because not only do I have... Uh, I'll stream most of the games that I can when I'm available. I also do live content, IU videos. Uh, we also have football talk a lot of the nights of the week. Uh, yeah, so it would really mean a lot. We're, we're trying to grow a little bit here. Uh, some Somebody hitting that subscribe button and hitting the like button, and then I, I definitely appreciate the comments. It's definitely where it's at. And uh, at some point... Uh, Going to start doing live stream giveaways while we're in live streams for whatever we decide to do as we grow a little bit more. We'll, we'll put it out there for people that, that subscribe and hang out. We'll do drawings at the end, stuff like that for fun. I think that's always a good deal. You know, we're still at commercial right now. Much better game so far today. And, and I always, as I will tell everybody that is in here, I'm very critical on this team. I'm very critical of how the game of college basketball is played. 
and uh, I got called a Dan Dockich type of commentating last week, and I take that to heart, and I say I love that because Dan Dockich put up one of the single greatest defensive efforts in college basketball history. If you don't know what I'm talking about it, put type in Dockich v. Jordan. Says it all right there. Uh, he's he's very critical. I like the way he he coaches. I, I I know he's sometimes a little too critical. I just want to see these guys correct their problems and be a good basketball team because I think the potential is there. We Trace is absolutely a stud. Our inside play, if we if we can get Michael Durr acclimated to giving Race and Trace more time to rest, I think we're going to be bigger and better underneath. And we still haven't. You know, Logan Duncombe still hasn't developed very well yet because he has not seen much playing time. But if we get those four guys to where we can rotate, you know, Duncombe in for four or five minutes a game and get Durr, you know, nine to ten minutes a game, that's really going to help Trace and Race be productive. Should be the goal. Geronimo is playing. You know, I'm not sure, but Tamar Bates doesn't look like he's going to be on the floor. Missed a three-point shot. Uh, Fennessey grabs the rebound. Tamar Bates doesn't look like he's ready to go in the game. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, maybe that was in another time. Here we go. Got the offense set at the top of the key. Over to Parker Stewart on the left wing. Parker down to race in the corner. Race is looking to pass. Passes to Cobb at the top of the key. Cobb can't, almost doesn't handle it. Passes off to Trace on the block. Trace drives the lane. Baby hook. A little light. Race tips it up and misses the tip in. And the ball's on the ground. Who's got it? Fennessey comes up with the ball. Fennessey drives the lane, and Fennessey gets a layup. Fennessey picked up the loose ball and scored 41-30, 15-04 left to go in the game. As Burge brings it across the timeline, passes the ball around the horn. McGowan's got it on the right wing. McGowan's to Burge. Burge drives the lane, passes back out to McGowan's. Deep three over the backboard, off the rim, over the backboard. <coughs> Goodness. Fennessey was a little out of control there on the Euro step, but got it up off the glass and in the goal. Very nice play. It looked like that uh, three-point shot by McGowan's was a little deep. He looked like he was 26 foot out there. Here comes Fennessey across the timeline over to Cop on the left wing. Cop's looking down to the block to Race Thompson. Nothing there. Gets it to Fennessey over to Parker. Parker's on the right wing. Back to Fennessey up the key. Race at the free throw line. Gets the ball. Looks like they're in a little bit of a zone. Fennessey had the shot, but he didn't handle the pass. Dribbles one step, takes a two, misses Art off the rim. <laughs> Looks like they're playing a 1-3-1. Uh, Parker's on the ground. I don't know what that's about. Gets it over in the corner. Doesn't get the shot. Miller Cop recovers. McGowan's just drives the ball over to the right-hand side. There's the inlet pass. Trace steals it. Comes back on the, on the dribble drive. Driving the lane. Hands off to Cop for three. And, oh, Race Thompson comes in and dunks it on the bounce off of the rim. Oh, my God. Miller Cop shot the three, and Race come in and slammed it home. Straight over top of that dude, too. Straight up. Way to go, Race. McGowan's has got the ball. He's a little upset, looking to drive and get a shot. Tips it up. No good. Race strips it. Ball comes out. Everybody's reaching. Here comes Fennessey on the fast break. He comes away with the ball. Drives the lane, pulls it up, hands off to Parker for three. Ooh, I was getting ready to get excited. Uh, Nebraska gets the defensive rebound on the back. Here they come, pushing the ball up the court. Nobody got back on defense. Miller Cobb was just standing there. 43 to 32. 13 17 left to go in the game. Fennessey comes across the timeline and calls a timeout. Woodson, even though that series was okay, Woodson's not happy about getting back on defense. It looks like there's a little bit of stuff going on in there that uh, he wasn't happy with and takes the time out to get everybody back in check. But Ray Thompson off that bounce, dunks that ball straight over Mayan. Dude, that was something else right there. Lat Mayan uh, is a pretty big guy. He's 6'9". Race went straight up over the top of him and slammed it home on the second bounce off the rim. Uh, that was a pretty good shot by Miller Cop too, on the fast break. That three-point shot is acceptable. Miller's trying to find his way into the game today, but he's been struggling pretty bad. Uh, but not getting back on defense and allowing what shouldn't have been a fast break to be a fast break is unacceptable. 
I'm sure he's hearing about it in the in the timeout right now, to be honest. Wow. 43 to 32. Uh, IU takes their full it takes a full time out there. Give me a drink. I cannot breathe. I don't know what's going on today. Hey, how does everybody like the format? Uh, Alex has got me experimenting with OBS, and I'm trying to get a I'm trying to get a scoreboard program put in here. Uh, but as of now, I'm just using a game tracker from like uh, ESPN or College Basketball or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, Tony, this is Nebraska. How, I, but I but I'll say this. You know, and I go back to the same thing. I think we had the same conversation Tuesday talking about Syracuse. This is Nebraska, but they're they are very well coached. Uh, Fred Hoiberg is a pretty good coach. Uh, you know, he had them fired up today. Look, these guys are probably, you know, to be honest, they're probably tired. <clears throat> yes, the win is most important. Tuesday would have been Tuesday would have been huge to win that game. To be honest, if they had won Tuesday and then come in today and played well, then we would have got that dreaded first time in the top twenty-five. However, I I, I, got, I got to say that you know I, I can see where Hoiberg is trying to adjust to take away our strengths, and he's done a pretty good job of that. He's pretty much, other than the rebounding side of it, he's pretty much kept race and trace. You know under control. I can't say you can't take them out of the game, but he's had them under control and he's defended the three very well, not giving a lot of open looks and he's changing up his defense a little bit. So, you know, the, the good coaches don't have to have good teams. They have to have teams that believe we got to, they're in the zone again. It looks I, to me, it looks like a one, three, one gets the ball down to race on the block. Everybody, you got to move to different spots on the floor. Race is dribbling into the lane, puts up a little hook shot off the rim. Nice shot, just wouldn't go down. Here comes Nebraska pushing the ball back up the court. Burge is bringing it up the right-hand side against Fennessey. Fennessey's got him on the dribble. He drives to the left. He's trying to get around. Doesn't make it around. Gets over in the corner. Number 32 dribbles into the lane up against Race Thompson. Race, good defense, but he gets the shot to go. They get it back under 10. Nine-point lead, 12-25 left to go, 43-34. Fennessey gets it over to Tamar Bates. Tamar Bates is finally back in the game, replacing Miller Cop. I didn't figure he'd stay in. Over. Oh, Parker has the ball. It looks like it was loose there. Burge almost had a steal from a weak bounce pass. Gets it over to the left wing, gets it tipped. There's the fast break. Burge is out on it. This is going to be two. And Burge lays it in. 4-0 run here. Sloppy passing. Okay, Indiana's Brenda. This kid, Verge, this Alonzo Verge is trying to fire him up. It looks like a 1-3-1 one, one or a 1-2-2. Two, two. I can't tell which. Gets the ball over. Trace has got the ball down on the block. Now it looks like a 2-3. Probably just a 2-3. Parker drives into the lane a little bit. Over to Fennessey. Fennessey splits the defenders. Takes a – he didn't look ready to shoot. Shoots it over the rim. Here comes McGowan's up the left-hand side. And they reset the offense with Alonzo Burge at the top of the key. Over McGowan's, he drives in, passes back to Burge. Burge down on the baseline, goes to put it up. Can't get a shot off. They're going to call Race Thompson for a push. Playing good. Yeah, points off a turnover, Tony. I'm telling you, this Nebraska team has fight. They, you know, they're going to be in games. They're probably going to get beat a lot. But that you know, it's just like like I said, nothing's safe in this in this Big Ten. It's kind of like the NFL right now. There's any given Sunday mentalities out there. A lot of these teams are not that great.
but they come out there we go had to get a little bit of a i am telling you what i don't know what is wrong with my cable connection today jesus criminy Usually the high end days, it's it's like uh, Saturday night, Friday night. I I have a little bit of trouble with so much bandwidth, but I'm on a solid connection, and I don't even have a stable connection right now. Let me get that comment off the screen. Yeah, but there's a lot of guys that are not playing ball well today. Uh, that's not letting me do anything. Am I froze? Anyway, we're still on commercial break. Hopefully the the stability of the connection kicks back in. It's getting there. It's back up to where at least it's there. We go. We're back up to full connection. Um, let's see. Let's talk about. Let's talk about my day. Big Ten Network shut off on me for oh I don't know 10, 15 minutes. I had to stream off of Fox Sports. That was glitchy. And my Streamyard connection has been off a little bit today. I'm hardwired in. I'll have to double check it and see what's going on. But anyway, at least we're still here. I've got a backup plan if I go out. I guess I can't have a real... I've got another stream yard brought up in case that, that this one fails. And I can jump right back into it. I, I, so I can try to bounce back and forth between two. Will not fail, you guys. We'll be in here for the rest of the game. Oh, 50 years ago, construction completed in 1971 of the Simon... I can't say his name. Scott Assembly Hall. Wow, those are some cool pictures. I love, if anybody's never been there, sitting in the high section at Assembly Hall is one of the coolest spots ever to watch a basketball game from. It is an amazing place to watch a game. As we get back to the game, the fans all stand up, rise to their feet as we get ready to play ball again here, guys. Come on, we need a good push here. 11-18 to go. We need a defensive stop. Nebraska's got the ball at the top of the key. Passes over. Drives in the lane against Race. Race has got position, and he missed the shot. Race gets the rebound. Good defense. He should have made that basket, though, but Race was in good position. Seven-point lead with 11 minutes to go. Fennessey brings the ball across the timeline, looking around to see where he wants to pass it. Drives on the left-hand side. Needs to pass it to Parker Stewart, top of the key. Parker's looking at trying to get the, get the ball to the middle of the zone. Tamar Bates has got the ball on the wing. Parker runs it left, left wing. Fennessey's got it. Nothing happening. Parker at the straight up and down three point shot from top of the key. Parker gets it back up to a double digit lead at 10. 10 37 left to go. Here comes Nebraska. Nebraska's Verge drives the ball, has nowhere to go, passes it out to the left wing. Over on the ball, gets it down on the baseline, back out to the left wing for a deep three. Miller Cop controls the rebound. Here comes Tamar Bates with the ball. Tamar Bates sets the offense from the left wing. Over to Miller Cop, top of the key. Pick comes from Race Thompson over on the left wing. He's got the ball behind the three-point line. Fennessey breaks to the basket. No go there. Back out to Tamar. Ten on the shot clock. Tamar Bates drives the baseline. He gets it blocked out of bounds, a little out of control. But there was nothing happening within that offense. They weren't really, really getting good movement from it. So Tamar tried to make something happen. Good defense by number 35 on Nebraska. Hey, you know what? Today's going to be the first day that I did not get a fan of the opposing team in here at all. Normally, we get one. Looks like tomorrow's going to shoot free throws. Oh, they called him for a foul. Oh, that was nice. Tomorrow hits it. Mars getting ready for the second free throw as soon as they take the girls' stuff off of here so I can see. Come on. There we go. He's got the ball there for a free throw. Looks like second shot is up and it's good. He hits both free throws. Here comes Nebraska back across the timeline. Number 10 has the ball. Passes off over to Derek Walker. Walker comes across the time. Hands off to another one that I'm not sure of the name. We've got some subs in there. McGowan's has the ball. <coughs> That's offensive. But they call it. Yeah, Parker's claiming about, about the push off, but they don't get it. McGowan's, let's see. Parker reached, but you know what? McGowan's pushed off. 
So they called the first one. 20 seconds on the shot clock, dribbles to the left, looking for nothing. Walker's got the ball. Nothing going there. Hands off to not sure who. Misses the long three-pointer. Ball's tipped around. Miller Cop gets fouled by Derek Walker. Walker is on the ground again. Yeah, you are. 1971, Tony, is that what you're talking about? When, a, a, when an assembly hall was built? You know what? Very similar. Size and stature and everything. Uh, Fennessey's got the ball at the top of the key, swings it around. You know what? Nebraska's going to stay in this zone. Parker shoots, and Parker scores three over a defender. Yep, Parker Stewart's he's starting to get a little warm here. He's picked up his shooting a little bit. 15-point lead, 51-36, 9.02 to go. If Parker makes and burns them one more time in this zone, I suspect they'll go back to man. And Fennessey's getting called for the foul, and he's not happy either. Look at this. We're less than nine minutes to go in the half, and there's only the next the next foul will, on Indiana will be the first free throw in the one and one of this game. That it, yeah, I see what he's doing. It's where Finn. I'll talk about it here in a second. Oh, there's the break to the basket. Nothing there. McGowan's comes out, gets the ball at the top of the key, drives left. All the way to the hoop. Trey stuff seem off, knocks it off of him when he hits the ground and it's Indiana's ball. Fantasy was complaining about that. Uh, that was a great block. McGowan's goes up against Trace. Trace blocks it and knocks it right off of McGowan's head out of bounds. That was a great play. Fantasy was complaining about that foul call, but with his arms in defense, his arms were forward. So when he comes up in his verticality, he has that space and he runs right into. Fennessey's arm. That's why they call the foul on Fennessey. His arm should be back in his in his space. Fennessey's got the ball, getting ready to shoot. Passes it off to Parker. Parker dribble drives over to Fennessey. Fennessey, nothing there. Looking to get inside on the zone. Cross court to Tamar. Tamar steps back for a 19-footer. In and out. Fennessey gets the offensive board and controls it. Over to Parker. Down to Trace on the block. Trace drives the lane. Misses the shot. He's a little off balance. Here comes Burge up on the right wing. Fennessy picks him up. Dribble drives around trying to get around Fennessy. Hands off. Here comes number 32. I do not know his name for the driving layup and one. Looks like Miller Cop fouled him. I got to get this boy's name. He's been in here quite a bit today. Uh, something Bach. Wilhelm Breidenbach. Breidenbach goes strong to the goal and does get the basket. We're back under timeout again here, 51 to 38. Dude, that block was sweet. And then the fact that when he, you know, when he comes down, it's going out of bounds, it lands right on the dude's head. Can't ask for a better thing than that. Yeah, pushing that on forward, going, you know, you know, we need, we really, as far as Indiana was concerned today, and we'll talk about this really fast, we needed to control home court for the start of their Big Ten season. We had to win today. I hate I was not I was going to start the broadcast today by calling this a must win game today because in the grand scheme of things winning your home opener in conference is very important and showing well on the road in your home opener is uh very important as well his nickname is glasses I get that uh, them them things are big like Kurt Rambis looking stuff right there but uh you know so playing well today and then going to Wisconsin this week and uh, going to Wisconsin this next week and, and playing well on the road, showing resiliency on the road, playing team basketball. I think the game at Syracuse is really going to help us for the game at Wisconsin. Totally different style of basketball. Uh, this game at Wisconsin is really going to be tough to win. I bet you our shooting percentage is really down there because they are – they're very defensive minded up there, but you know, a, a, growing as a team is is a process over the course of a season. That's why a loss in November is not always important. Yes, I'm pretty positive. I would have to look it up, but yeah, and and I think Nebraska only won four games that season in three or four games in conference that year. So. 
you know, that's the other thing about the Big Ten and the, and the committee. When they go to sele- for selection Sunday, winning games you're supposed to win a lot of times in the in the in the committee's eyes is way more important than losing games that you might lose. You might be supposed to lose. You know what I'm saying? So this home game with Nebraska is a is a must win as far as the committee is concerned because one team is get, is set to be better than the other and they really hold you accountable for those losses. Now, that game at Syracuse was that one that they were supposed to win? Maybe. But it is a it is a road game and it doesn't count as highly. But playing well at home. This is the first time in the Big Ten's history two Big Ten coaches that were both former NBA players and head coaches. See a trend? Uh if you if Jawan Howard would have coached in the NBA for a for a season as a head coach, he would be in that uh, concept as too. Here goes up for the, the, the free free throw for making a three point play, and he buries it. Thirty nine to fifty one, eight minutes to go in the half. All right, I don't care what we do on offense, just don't turn it over and play defense, and I'll be happy with whatever the results are. Cops got the ball on the right wing, gets it to Trace on the block, and a dunk. Trace Jackson just dunked like hard ball, went into the stands hard. 14-point lead, 53-39, 7.37 left to go in the game. Ball's going around, cut off, hand off to Verge. He's going to drive on the bigger guy, gets cut off. Hey, Trace moved his feet and cut the young man off. He's got the ball again out the top of the key, looking to get around, over in the corner, drives the lane. Goes to put up a shot and doesn't get it up. Five seconds on the shot clock, and the little runner is good. Cuts us back to a 12-point lead. Seven minutes and 10 seconds to go. Webster scores for Kobe Webster scores for Nebraska. Here comes Finnessy looking again. Gets it over tomorrow on the left wing. You know, right now they took Parker out of the game, and I'm not sure why, but Leal is back in, so... That's who they want to shoot the ball right now, I assume, was Anthony Leal. Gets it to Cop at the free throw line. Down to Trace. Trace shoots a little floater in the lane. Doesn't go. Here comes Nebraska on the rebound. Burge is driving the lane all the way to the goal. And he makes it all the way in. And then the rebound comes and gets it there. Nobody cut him off. Stay back on that guy. Golly. Here comes Cop. He's got the ball on top of the key. Look in the pass, passes to Trace over on the left wing. Trace getting ready, hands off to Leal. Leal drives the passes to Cop. Cop gets blocked in the go in the underneath the basket, comes back around. Over to Tamar Bates in the corner for three. In and out. Ten point game, six minutes to go. Here comes Nebraska after a couple missed opportunities there by IU. McGowan shoots the long three, buries it. Here comes here comes Nebraska. That's a little 7 0 run there. Yep, 7-0 in the last minute, 20. Come on, guys, got to play defense. Race Thompson set at the scores bench, ready to come back in. Here comes Finnessy, drives the lane, passes the cop, goes over to Leal, Leal to Jackson. Jackson Davis goes up for the shot, draws a foul. Looked a little out of control there, but he still gets the foul. Looks like he's going to go to the free throw line. Glasses is complaining, what did I do? That's what a nickname, Glasses. That is the first time that McGowan's has set up that deep and then just pulled the trigger. King Pookie streaming tonight. Chicago Bulls game more than likely. Everybody uh, pick up on that channel if you want to watch the Bulls game be streamed. Trace hits his free throw, gets a friendly rim. Gets that lead back to eight. 538 left to go in the game. IU is up eight. Free throws are going to be big coming down the stretch tonight. Big. Trace shoots a second free throw, and it's good. Trace has been pretty good from behind the stripe. Here comes Webster with the ball up the left wing. Looks like they're resting their guards for just a second to give them a breather. Here he comes. Hands off over. Oh, McGowan's again. Way off this time. Oh. Oh. Xavier Johnson just didn't want to get called for the foul. Uh. Bad shot. Here's where their inconsistency kicks in. And then lucky to control an offensive rebound from the weird carom. 
Nebraska gets the ball in. Uh, Trey steals it. Gets called, uh, and they call Walker for the foul. That should be getting close to it for that guy. That looks like that'll be his fourth with 523 left to go. Trace is going to go back to the free throw. King Pookie Nation, everybody, is a Chicago sports guy. More than likely, he will be streaming the Chicago Bulls tonight. Trying to grow his little channel there and do a little bit more with it. So, if you have time and the ability, swing by and see King Pookie Nation Alvarez. Yeah, I, I got a good camera, but there's days that, like when I'm using OBS, it's fine. It looks right. Other days, it doesn't look so good. We're in timeout still. This looks like a, this looks like more of a, a, a class session than it does a timeout. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised about Mark Turgeon leaving. There must have been some stuff going on there. I know that there was some, uh, I'm not sure what you want to call it, just animosity on the campus about the team. And uh, and now I know Danny Manning is going to take over for the rest of the year. Danny Manning does have some seasons coached at Wake Forest and was an assistant under Turgeon there. It's the same story as last year. They're a bad team, but they have a lot of good players. They just haven't figured out how to play with each other because Fred Hoiberg is trying to build a quality team. He's been scraping the bottom of the barrel for kids, and he's using the transfer portal to build a team. We'll see how the rest of this game goes. Not pointly, but you know what? They took NC State to four overtimes or whatever that was. You know, all, all is well that ends well, but here we go. Tamar Bates brings the ball across the timeline. It's a cop in the corner. Cop gets it into Trace. Trace goes up for an easy layup. No competition. Here comes Burge up the left wing. Indiana's back up by 11. 5.04 left to go in the game. Burge drives to the right, tries to get around Xavier. Xavier is in good position. Hands in his face. Short rims the ball. Xavier gets the rebound. Here comes Xavier coming up the court. Tries to get around Burge and gets the foul. A little bit of his own medicine there. Way to go, Xavier. Xavier has not had a good game. Uh, I got a C920, Pokemon, or King. Mine's a C920, and it's a solid, it's a solid camera. Here goes uh, Xavier at the free throw line. First one is up, and it is good. That might be Xavier Johnson's first point of the game. Nope, that's his third point. He's got one layup. Second free throw is up, and it is also good. We got the lead back to 13. 453 to go in the game, 59-46. Here comes Burge across the timeline. Looking what he's going to do. Passes off over to McGowan's. McGowan's is a little deep on the three. He drives the right wing over to Webster. 4-3. Webster buries it. A little laxed on that deep perimeter defense there, IU. This is what happened in the Syracuse game. Here comes Johnson across the timeline. Race comes out to set a pick. Johnson goes around him, drives the lane, over to Tamar Bates for three wide open, and it's hard off the back rim. And here comes Verge controlling the rebound. That was a good play. Uh, Tamar just missed the shot. He was too open, I guess. McGowan's over to Webster. And I'm not sure what the call was, but it's a turnover nonetheless. Indiana ball, 10-point lead with 4-11 to go in the game. Yeah, the turnover game has improved today, but – and it's it, – it, uh, yeah, I'm going to get into that, but it's definitely been an improvement on a lot of the aspects. Here comes Xavier across the timeline again. But Xavier Johnson did something there a minute ago. <coughs> Races. Got on block. Puts up a little hook shot. Race Thompson's money. Here comes Nebraska across the timeline, slowing it back up again with a down 12. 
Webster goes over to the right, drives it over to, gives it to Burns. Burns over to McGowan's. Here comes Webster again. McGowan's ready to shoot. Doesn't get the shot off. Hands off right. Here comes Webster, drives the left lane, gets it inside, throws it up, high off the glass. Trace goes straight up and gets the rebound over top of uh, Walker. Trace brings the ball up to court, controlling it. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. They're getting a little physical out there. Uh, Verge and uh, Johnson got a, are getting a little physical with the hand checks. Here goes Johnson, drives the lane, gets a shot blocked, and will get a foul call. Verge has to walk away. I seen I seen it look get like it was getting ready to be a fight there for a second. Now neither one of them are happy campers right now. And anyway, we're gonna go timeout again. Looks like the score is gonna be sixty one to forty nine. Let's talk about uh, a little bit though. Stats are better today so far. You know what? Nebraska scored less than fifty points thus far in this game. That's where our defense wants to play in that range. Nebraska is. Only shooting 37% from the field and 15 point from three. We're not doing a whole lot better. But, uh, you know, this game has not been decided at the free throw line, too. And you know what? You know how happy that makes me? Because it's only 142. You know, I mean, this game is going to go off in the right amount of time. It's not going to be drawn out. You know, it, it's, it's the way college basketball should be. But, yes, so far today, the turnover situation is a lot better. Uh, in the second half, I think we've only got two. Seven steals in the second half, or in this game for Indiana today so far. Fouls are even. Free throw shooting is better. Uh, they're catching up on the rebounding side of it, but we're making more shots. So, hey. All in all, it's going to be a good game. Hey, look for a recorded video for tomorrow. I'm going to do uh, a week in review uh, since we're getting close to, you know, since now we're starting into the Big Ten season. I'll put something, uh, a little four to five minute review video out for what I saw this week and what I look forward to uh, on areas that need to improve for next week's games. I'll hit up a little bit of preview of the Wisconsin game. Uh, please uh, stop by and watch that one if you would. If you uh, haven't seen any of our other content, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell. We're on here quite a bit. Shouldn't take me too much. It should come out sometime tomorrow evening. Uh, I want to kind of go through a week in review and let you guys know where everybody stands, how the Big Ten looks. What do you use for a green screen? I use a green screen, King. No, I bought uh, actually where I'm at now. I bought it's it's a big piece of green tarp for a green screen. It's actually green screen, but where I'm at now, it's in a, it's more of an enclosed smaller area for like an office, and so I just hung it across the two walls. I got stands for it and stuff like that. Uh, I got an Amazon link for it, I think somewhere, but it wasn't a whole lot. All right, looks like we're getting ready to get back to playing basketball here. Three minutes, five seconds to go in the game. <clears throat> 61 to 49. <sighs> Xavier Johnson is going to get two free throws here. These are big. First one is up, and it is soft off the rim and good. <clears throat> Second free throw is up, and it is good. 63, 49, 305 left. Here comes Birds with the ball across the timeline. Passes off to Webster. Webster gets it down underneath to McGowan's. McGowan's gets blocked by Trace. Xavier Johnson picks up the ball. What a good play. It was a, it was a set play called, and it worked to perfect, except for Trace got there to block it. Indiana's got a chance right now to really blow this game completely wide open. Xavier's got getting pressure from Burge on top of the key. 
Drives around to the right. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Hands off to Bates. Bates is dribbling around the top. Pass over to Parker for three. Short off the rim. Parker's going to get the rebound. Save it inbounds. Oh, he stepped on the end line. Really good. Good sequence there. Trey st stuffed McGowan's underneath the basket. McGowan's looks like a freshman against this team. He doesn't look the way he has looked. Man, Trace is formidable under that basket. Here comes Verge across the timelines, looking for somebody to pass it to. Gets it to Walker at the top of the key. Hands off to Webster for three. Hard off the back iron. Race Thompson gets the rebound. Hands off to Xavier Johnson. 63 to 49. 209 left to go in the game. Looks like we're going to close it out here, guys. Let's hopefully we'll put up and just finish strong. Xavier Johnson switches him and Parker Stewart's position on the floor, passes to race on the block. Race dribbles down against McGowan's. And what's the call? Looks like there's going to be a foul. Looks like Race Thompson is going to shoot some free throws. <clears throat> Yeah, Mike Woodson's really – it looks like he's giving it to uh, Xavier Johnson right now. Looks like he's not really pleased with something that he's done. Here goes Race with the free throw. Shot is up, and it is hard. Missed it. Here comes McGowan's with the ball. He clears the offensive rebound, brings it up the left-hand side, dribbles across to the middle of the right, gives it to Verge. Verge steps back for three, hits it. 63 52, 143 left. Timeout called by Nebraska. 143 to go. We use some clock, hit a few three. Yeah, you know, isn't that amazing how the momentum changes right there? Yeah, he does look perturbed. The momentum changes when you miss the front end of a one and one. It's almost like breathing new life into the other team. If you make that front end, it doesn't matter so much about the second one. Unless it's down, you know, you're, and that's what you need is just for one and two. But when you miss that front end of a one and one, team comes down and has it feels like they have confidence, and then they can go they go right into a play and score. Pretty good defense this half, to be honest. Pretty good defense the whole game, to be fair. A lot of a lot of improvements from the other day. Uh, as uh, what's my buddy's name, Tony said earlier. But you got to remember, this is just Nebraska. This is a game you're supposed to win. That's true. But, you know, the, you play the games because in, any given Sunday is the mentality in, in most sports right now. Teams believe that they can win. So you have to go out on the floor and prove it. They've got a full-court press going right now. Xavier gets the ball, makes a bad pass. Here comes the steal. Out or Verge going to get ready. Nope, doesn't get the three off. Parker cuts him off. Gets in the lane. Tips it. That's going to be our ball off of. Off of Glasses, I don't know what else to call him because I can't Breidenbach. Glasses gets his hand on it. So that was a benefit for us. Yep, right off of off his fingers. Here goes the inbound. Savior gets it. Double team comes, and he gets fouled immediately by Verge. So it's it's that time of day. Let's see. Watch this. Let's see if he, if he hits two free throws. Let's see how good the offensive possession is. If he misses a, the front end of this, Oh, it's 10. He gets two. So it's a little bit better situation. The one and one's out the window. All right. Come on, Xavier. Xavier looks like he's got good concentration. Free throws up, and it is good. 64 52. 131 left to go in the game. Man, this does look like a typical Big Ten game, though, doesn't it? Second free throw is up, and it is also good. McGowan's takes it out. Here comes Burge down the right wing. Burge is drilling across the timeline on the right side. He's got Xavier Johnson in defense. Tamar comes over to cut him off, switches out. He has nowhere to go. Right now, he's just being cut off every time he tries to drive, and he will draw the foul from Tamar Bates as he's going up for the layup. 118 to go. Maybe called him an offensive foul. They did. They called him for the offensive foul. Oh, that was a weak pass. Gets across the timeline. Johnson's got the ball. 112, 22 seconds to go. 
in on the shot clock. 13-point lead. Xavier's content to sit there and run the clock. Here comes the double team. Passes out of it to Trace. Trace has got the ball. Looking to, here he's going to drive it. He's going to drive the lane. Puts it up and hits an eight-footer. And he will get the foul against Glasses. Hey, Tim, I'm going to convert you to a Hoosier fan. If it, You're going to be there. Definitely on the outside looking in as far as the national scene goes, but this team can develop. Looks like Race is going to get to go to the bench with a hard-fought day. Race Thompson's played an, an integral part of today's game. And the second free throw is off. 67-52, 15 point lead, 51 seconds left to go. Here comes Webster across the timeline. Nothing doing. He gets cut off by Bates, cut off again by Trace. Deep three. And that guy just smoked a 30 footer. 55 to 67, 42 seconds to go. Here comes up against the press. Xavier loses it. 25, three seconds to get across. Number 30 picks up the foul. Tominga. Kaise Kise Tominga. Hit his first three pointer of the day. It was a bomb, too. Oh, really? That's cool, Tim. Geronimo at the free throw line for the first free throw it is hard off the back rim. 67 55, 36 seconds to go. You know what? 36 seconds left in this game. And this was an 11 and a half point spread. And what am I looking at? A 12 point game right now. I'm telling you what, these odds makers know something. Hits the second one, gets a friendly rim. 13 point lead, 33 seconds left to go in the game. Here comes Webster across the timeline. Xavier Johnson in defense, drives the lane, looks for a 12 footer and hard, short off the rim. Controlled rebound by Geronimo, hands it off to Xavier, 21 seconds. It looks like they will back off and let the time clock expire, and we will get a 68-55 to 55 victory today. Right on for that. Here it is, 9 seconds, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and there's the buzzer. Indiana gets a hard-fought victory today. Um, it was definitely needed. It was definitely deserved. They played well today. They end up with a 13-point victory, cover the spread by a point and a half. How does the odds makers get it that close all the time? I have no idea. Had a really nice uh, group in here today. want to thank everybody that was in here. I'll go back as far as I can go. But uh, Tony, Tony V, Alex, Jonathan Jansen stopped by at the beginning of the stream. Thank you guys for showing up. Jake ZZ Funk had to leave, but he wanted to come in and show support. Uh, that's Brewers Prospecting. Jeff was in the house, another YouTuber. JB stopped in the house again. Thank you, JB. I appreciate you. Alex was in here today at work. She's working. She's sneaking. I had all kinds of technical difficulties today, but it all worked out in the end. Heavy Metal Detective. Uh, that's Colin. That's my buddy from New Albany, who's a Louisville fan. Alley Cat Treasures is Tim. Geezer stopped by for a minute today. Thank you, guys. Uh, Indiana Creek Walker has some pretty good insight to IU. I like it when he's in here chatting it up. Man, what a what a good game today. Uh, King Pookie, who's going to be zooming, he's going to be running his stream tonight for Chicago Sports. If you're interested, go check him out. He's just getting into the hobby of, of streaming, so a little support would probably do him some, some good. But all in all, that was a, a pretty good group of commenters today. We had a great time in here tonight. Also, um, let me go ahead and get to the schedule here really fast first before we go through statistics. Uh, I will get it set up for... Four days from now. Looks like next Wednesday, Indiana will be at Wisconsin on the road. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern. I will be here for that next Wednesday. Awesome. 
But that felt pretty good for that nickel, didn't it, Tim? Honestly. River Rat was in the house again, as always. Dennis Daniel, thank you, buddy. I, I haven't seen you comment before. Uh, starting, you know, even probably as soon as Wednesday, if I get it straightened out, those that hang out, and if they hang out towards the end, or at least they chat during the stream and come back at the end, uh, we're going to start throwing some little bit of giveaways for the people that are in here and hanging out and making this more fun than just me talking. Listening to, you know, I love to hear other people's perspectives. I learn from other laymen's like myself uh, and get different perspectives on basketball. I think it's great. Thank you for commenting, Dennis. Thank you for being here. You know, uh, next stream will be Wednesday night. Uh, it will be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. It will be a road game. I don't know as I will be as friendly in that one as I am today because I will probably be a little bit of anima animated because that's a well-coached team up there that, you know, can uh, can really get after it. They are ranked in the AP Top 25, so that is important as well. Going back to today's game, let's 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 look at it really fast. Uh, it's a difference of two halves, honestly. Indiana played well. It's actually the difference of four quarters. The first ten minutes of the half, Indiana played uh, god awful. Uh, they did not play well at all, but you know stayed reasonably close. I think they got up to a thirteen point lead for a minute there. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was something drastic like that. Then Indiana stormed back the last 10 minutes of the half and, and, and closed out the half with the lead. They only gave them eight points in the last 13 minutes of the half. So that tells you right there how good it is, honestly. So there, there was that. The second half was pretty much totally controlled by Indiana. They did give up a few more points in the second half. Uh, a lot more of the longer three-pointers went in for Nebraska, a few shots like that. Uh, they got on a couple of little runs there. All in all, we withstood those runs fairly well today. Back to the points of the game. Uh, play a 40-minute game. Well, we played 20 in Syracuse. Actually, let's say 30 because of the, the two overtime sessions, out of 30 out of 50. Today, we played 30 out of 40. <coughs> So we improved upon that. We only had one stretch for 10 minutes. It wasn't good. Defense was was good. Um, some of the defensive statistics today that, you know, really stand out is that we had seven steals. We had five blocks. Uh, and we had 31 defensive rebounds. So let's say defense was checked today. We played a pretty good defensive game. Turnovers today, way different. 15 turnovers total. I think it was 11 in the first half. So we only turned the ball over four times in the second half. Four turnovers gave us a nine-point advantage for the rest of for that whole half on the scoring difference. Put up 44 points in the second half, too. We almost, you know, we 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 actually equaled a good offensive output in the second half. The guys that played well today. Um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm not, Trace played well defensively. He struggled offensively today, but he did end up with 14 points, four for five from the free throw line. Check that off as an improvement. Free throws were better today. Miller cop did not play well. Uh, he did have three assists and three rebounds, but he had four turnovers today. Uh, he just could not get in the flow of the game very well today. So he's either hot or cold and you got to figure it out quick. And I'll get to his replacement here in just a second that really filled up the stat sheet. Race Thompson uh, put up 11 points again. He's in double digits. He also got the 11 rebounds, so he hit the double-double. He had two offensive rebounds today. He did have uh, two assists today. Race did not turn the ball over today. That was one of my keys, the big guys not turning the ball over. So between Race and Trace today, we only had four turnovers. So the other night, I think we were somewhere around 12 of the turnovers were between them two. So the big guys passed the ball better today. We still did not get – Xavier Johnson scratched together eight points today, one layup and six free throws. Uh, gotta, i got to say that, you know, at the end of the day, he didn't play well. Parker Stewart shot in the second half a little bit better. Tamar Bates come in the first half and is, was the difference maker. Tamar Bates was the spark today. 
that got us over the hump in the first half to get us a lead. And that was real important going forward to finish this game out. Uh, Geronimo played okay, didn't play very many minutes. Anthony Leo came in and got some minutes. I'm not sure. I'm going to do some check-in. I, I'm not sure where Christian Lander was today. Uh, and, and I think this was the last game of Logan Duncombe's suspension, or the next one is. I'm not sure which. But he should be able to be available back soon. I'm going to have to go in here and do some research on the players and what, what their availability is. Fennessey didn't play bad, didn't play where I want him to. Uh, he did have three assists and two turnovers and a steal. Two fouls, he did have five points uh, and a couple rebounds, four rebounds. He did have two offensive rebounds, which was really good. He's just not – he just doesn't He just doesn't seem to be there yet. Uh, but Anthony Leal made you the best of his time today. And all, he had two assists, one turnover, one steal. Played a really good uh, role today. Happy for that kid. Michael Durr came in for just a few minutes today. He got two rebounds, one offensive, one defensive. Um, he put up, he made a basket and entered the stat sheet. Geronimo was the same. Beyond that, Tamar Bates was the other player today that saved us. He filled in for Miller Cop and picked up his slack going three for seven from the three point line. Uh, He did have one turnover, but he had 13 points. This is where we really needed the help today. Close this stream out by saying that it's, you know, this season's going to be a baby steps all the way, and we've got to keep moving forward. And today we did move forward from last, from Tuesday night. We played better defense, which we're at home. We played better defense. We did not necessarily shoot better, but we played more team basketball. The turnovers were way down, which made this game a lot more tolerable, and the officials didn't destroy this game by calling 100 fouls. As always, I want to appreciate each and every one of you that come in here and hang out today. I'm going to try to set it up for Wednesday night. We'll start We'll start doing giveaways at the end of the stream for those who comment and hang out. I think that's important to, to building a community uh, is, you know, find some cool stuff to, to dole out, meeting new people. Uh, that will encourage people to chat and hit that subscribe button. Uh, look forward to it on Wednesday night. Alex will be in here. Not sure right now. Uh, maybe tomorrow. If not, if, if she doesn't tomorrow, I might do a 405 football game. Uh, Steelers and Ravens. Just because uh, I'm an AFC North guy, I might want to see that. And then if not, definitely we will be back Monday night for sure to wrap up the NFL week, and then she will probably be doing Monday Night Football. Thank everybody for stopping in today. Please uh, hit the buttons on the way out, smash it. When I close the stream down, leave a comment down below of anything you'd like to see, how you'd like to see me improve it, anything I could do better to help make this more enjoyable for you so that when you're watching the game and you turn the volume off on the commentators and just listen to me, that we can be, you know, kind of communicate at the same time. I love... Uh, feedback and being critical is fine. I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. And I will see you next Wednesday while Indiana goes to Wisconsin. Cole Center.